Hey your fans, it's the one and only Optobotomist coming to you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 421 of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Deluxe version of Star-Lord. There are two versions of this. The deluxe one here comes with some extra accessories, but it's not exclusive to any particular store. You can get the deluxe set as well as the standard version at any retail. For the package, you've got an absolutely gorgeous, what looks to be like a radio of sorts. Uh, this is basically a speaker. You can kind of hear that that's textured. You got that really nice image of uh, Star-Lord right there. You got the awesome mixed volume two tape right on the inside. Star-Lord, all that stuff. You got the uh, Guardians or the Ravager logo. Well, it's not even, it's kind of like the Ravager logo, but it's now the Guardians of the Galaxy. You got the logo there. The top section here says Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And then it has like the little buttons that you would push for a tape player, which is hysterically awesome. The side here has that really cool image of the Milano flying around the opposite side has what looks oh yeah that's a volume switch and, and that kind of looks like a speaker on the back of the package you got the various warnings and contact information for hot toys and then it is that shoebox style package so you just shift it and there we go set that right there and then when you take that out you can see that where the uh, the tape was you just have a clear like plastic piece that allows you to see the tape which is actually on the inside card which is done up to look like kind of like a circuit board with different things of that nature and then on there is the casting crew responsible for making this figure then when you move that section down on the inside you have the clamshell that fully showcases the figure as well as all of his accessories uh, I I don't think it changes from the standard version to the deluxe one. I believe it's basically the same. The only thing that would be different is I don't think the standard one here says deluxe version, obviously. But I think in terms of the art and such, it's the exact same. But for the packaging, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 open up and out of his packaging. And as always, starting off first with his accessories. And always like any Hot Toy figure, you do get the instruction sheet. You do want to make sure that you go through this. There really isn't a ton on this that... You know, we don't know already. It shows you how to attach the head, how to turn the batteries on. Uh, there are instructions for some of the exclusive pieces, such as the, you know, partially deployed mask, how to attach the jetpack, uh, and then it shows how you can incorporate some of the other accessories um, and things that you shouldn't do. So make sure you do go through this. It will make your life a lot easier. Now, as I said, this is the deluxe version. So you do get a couple extra accessories. But starting off first with the ones that come with both the deluxe and the regular, obviously in addition to the two fisted hands that you can see on them, which are gloved, you get a pair of gloved hands that are in uh, the trigger finger kind of pose. Well, that, is it even trigger finger? I don't think it's trigger finger. It looks more like he's actually holding something to be totally out. Oh, you know, this might come in handy for like something like this. Maybe holding the little cassette tape kind of thing that that would be my guess because this is more of a uh, trigger finger kind of thing i guess you could use this as a trigger finger too uh, but it looks more like it's designed to hold something tiny such as the you know cassette tape so you do get that uh, then you do get a bunch of ungloved hands i kind of wish there was more gloved ones but you get a pair of relaxed ones very standard uh, of sorts uh, you do get that well I, again i don't know if this is really trigger finger uh, i mean this looks like a trigger finger obviously so you can put that in and just wedge that in actually it doesn't even fit in there all that well to be honest i mean you can get it in there so that obviously works. I mean, and again, I don't know. I mean, you can, luckily these are a little bit flexible, so you can kind of stretch and get that in. Well, yeah, I mean, that holds on there. Actually, that looks a little bit better than the more exaggerated trigger finger. So uh, kudos, I like that, that works pretty good. Uh, you get a, a left hand that is kind of, uh, again looking like he's holding something i guess you could do something like that but it doesn't really hold or anything so you do have that one for various poses and then you do get a pair of fisted hands much like the gloved ones but these ones don't have any gloves on them obviously so you do get all those you also do get a couple extra wrist pegs in case anything does happen uh, to complete the look of his 
general outfit, uh, especially when he's not wearing his jacket, and I'll show that off here in a bit. You do get his necklaces he wore. Uh, really nice detail. I'll come in to take a closer look. Oh, look, I'm so, well, well, if it focuses. Yeah, there we go. I'm so very happy that my camera focuses now. Uh, but you can see uh, great detail on these tiny little guys. Um, what they actually represent, I'm not sure. If you guys know, leave me a comment down in the video description. Let me know what these are meant to kind of replicate but I really like the way that these are you can see that this one here well again focus camera uh, this one here has kind of a just a standard sort of I guess clasp kind of thing this one here I really like and again focus uh, because it, it has it just kind of tied around there and again keep focused on this it looks cool I like it so uh, you do get both of these and, and you can see little baby Groot right there uh, you do get both of these it, it completes the look for his outfit this this one here kind of looks like something from his Pirates of the Caribbean so you do have that now he also does come with his headphones. Unfortunately, I, I, I'm kind of confused by something here. Uh, now, number one, I think that this is just a reuse of the original Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Star-Lord. Unfortunately, I don't have that figure anymore. I did sell it to uh, fund the purchase of this one because, as I've said many times, I buy my stuff. Uh, but one thing that I'm noticing here is that you do get a Guardians of the Galaxy. If I can come in here, if it'll focus this close. You can see volume two, which is great, uh, and that's the way that it looked. What I don't understand is this one on the inside also says volume two, and it you can plainly see that they're different looking. There's different looking um, stickers on it. Uh, I don't remember exactly uh, how the tape looked. I know that it looked like this because we've gotten a lot of kind of things that have looked like that. I don't know if there was another one that kind of looked like that, or if, again, just as part of the whole reuse thing, because maybe they just, maybe that's what was in the other one. I, I honestly don't remember. I, I apologize. But uh, I do believe that this is just a reuse. One thing that's a little unfortunate is the color is off on it. it everything wants to focus on the back. So now I got my new focus on, or new lens and focus thing in the uh, camera here now it's going super crazy uh, but like the purple on here is too deep of a color uh, so that's a little bit inaccurate it's a little unfortunate I don't mind it all that much but it should be a different color uh, it also comes with these little I, I don't even know what you call these little earphone things they just kind of clip on like that and I want to say that he had that in uh, the Guardians 2. I, I'm not 100% certain again, um, but you do have that. I apologize. Uh, now, again, to go along with the accessories for both of these figures, he does come with his blasters. These are identical, uh, except for some of the paint applications to the first version, but these are absolutely gorgeous still. Coming in real close, again, if I can get it to focus. Gorgeous detail on that entire piece. Really nice paint. Got some nice gold color, silver. I really like sort of carbon fiber look of the handle. Uh, you got some nice scorch marks around the blaster areas. Really very very nice. Uh, as I said, identical in terms of the mold. Some of the paint applications are a little bit different than what we had in the first one, but it, it works uh, because he still used these in the second one, so I don't mind that at all. Now, he also does come with his jetpack, which I really haven't played with too much, but you can see really nice painted detail on here. Very reflective. That looks really very, very nice. Nice accents with some gold. You got some red down there. You got that strapping kind of thing. Uh, it is all made out of a plastic, so it's not really stretchy or anything, so be careful when you're doing it. Uh, great detail with the actual thrusters here. Looking very accurate and real. That's that's one thing that I love. The, the paint application on here really does give a very nice metallic look to it absolutely love that and i'll show how to put that on here in a bit uh in addition to everything that comes with star lord uh you i mean or that's meant for star lord you got a little tiny baby group it's a one six scale baby group uh and as you can see this has a tremendous amount of detail in it as well for being such a small little piece it is a little bit you know kind of bendy in the arms you know you can see a little bit of a flex to it but great detail on there nonetheless got some nice paint with the little green section there gorgeous 
detail in the face if I can get it to, I mean again really nice detail right there and then he comes with this little um, I don't even want to call it a stand because he doesn't stand on it but a little base and there's a magnet there and then he's got a magnet on his butt that you can put that there and he can sit there which is adorable it's so adorable I think it's so cute uh, now you can also use this with the exclusive jacket uh, which is the long jacket and it magnetizes right there and you can have him sit on there now unfortunately you can't do that with this guy but you can do that with that so I'll leave that there for right now uh, but again staying with the standard accessories he does come with a really really nice uh, portrait of uh, the Star Lord mask fully deployed on there you can see the hair coming out gorgeous detail all the way around you got a little bit of wear in the gold section you can see a very nice reflective paint there is some wear marks throughout the entire thing but really nice and then you just got the little ball peg that pops on there you pull this back section off you got the little battery compartment and bling the lights do turn on really nice i like it's a very even color on there it looks really good illuminates very well across the entire eyes or eye itself i mean that looks really really very nice i'm happy with how that turned out and then you just put that back on there like so and then uh get these well i guess i could take this off uh, he also does come with his scarf uh I, I i believe yeah this is this is part of the regular version he wore it uh briefly I, this is never going to get used. <laughs> uh, but he does come with a scarf. Like I said, he wore it once when he was on Eagle's Planet, I believe. Uh, I remember seeing it and thinking, why does he need a scarf? It doesn't look like it's really cold. Uh, but he comes with a scarf. Maybe it's because, you know, it's Star-Lord and, you know, Star-Lord needs to look fancy. So you do have that. Uh, getting this off to the side uh, and then again with the standard accessories he does come with a gorgeous display base i love the whole image here of like the galaxy in the back you got that nice guardians of the galaxy logo you got the adjustable cradle now this is something that's a little bit kind of blah if you ask me uh, a lot of times the name plaque is on a little piece of metal this looks like it's just kind of printed on the plastic of the base which kind of says cheap to me to be totally honest with you uh i i like those metal display bases so just doing that i mean the design of this looks really nice you got the star lord you got a really nice intricate design around there it's just printed on the plastic um so i mean that's a little bit disappointing but when you have something that's standard and that's how it's always basically been that's something that's noticeable when you remove that so i don't like that very much now as part of the exclude well it's not even exclusive because like i said you can get it at any place big bad toy store has them sideshow has them all these places have the standard version and the deluxe version the deluxe version comes with a bonus long sleeve shirt obviously he's wearing his gray shirt that he wore in the movie underneath the jacket there but uh, there were a few times where he walked around without any jacket and without the gray shirt and this was the shirt that he did wear uh, remove that uh, it is a little bit of a stretchy material nice pattern on there you can see the little black stripes that go throughout there uh, to me i think that it's worth it to get the deluxe version because you get more options uh, but if you're not going to use anything like this it allows you the opportunity to get the figure at a lower price and save some money uh, especially if you're not going to use all of the accessories uh, i think that this is really nice now this was the the seller for me because i like star lord in the long jacket uh the, the first version i used was the long jacket one and everything uh, this one's a much nicer more modern uh, looking one as you can see it's not tattered like the original one was uh, the bottom was completely torn up and frayed and just destroyed and it was meant to look like that uh well he's you know now more famous he's star lord people know the name star lord more so he's got to look a little bit better so he's got a little bit better of a jacket so uh, great detail though a full leather type of material um people are concerned over it flaking that's something that happens with a lot of full leather jackets and such uh, but it is what it is uh the ability to take where, what, what i do with them 
Where'd you go? Did look, oh there he is, little baby Groot ran away. Uh, you can take this and you can position him on. Well, if you can see, let me angle my camera up a little. Uh, you can see that you can angle or you can position him on here. Unfortunately, this doesn't. That there's no magnet on that one. You can only do that with the exclusive jacket. So I like that. There's kind of an added bonus in there. You can just have him stand there. You kind of have like his little arm hold on to the collar i mean that's cute right it's cute i like it uh, but great detail on here really nice tailoring uh, good detail with the little shoulder bits here you got some nice buttons and little pins on here and such uh, some little arm sections and everything it's very similar to the short jacket but has more of that classic look uh, again he did wear this in the movie so it's not like it's just a random accessory or anything he did actually wear this uh, he didn't wear it as much, uh, but I, I really do like that. This was one of the biggest selling points. I mean, I mean this, eh, this was, but the biggest was definitely this. It is a kind of half, well, not even half, but slightly activated version of this. And you can see that's what the little clear bits here kind of replicate. Because remember, he would push the button on the side, and then all of this would bleep, appear on his face. This allows you to basically recreate that. You can have this on the actual head sculpt without having that full mask on there, which I think is great. Again, focus on here. Uh, but this was one of the big selling points. Again, so this piece here just detaches. And again, I'll show how to add all this on there. And then you just put this on and then you wrap this around his head itself, which uh, one thing I will say is that the, uh, the sizing does seem a little bit off and this you got like these overlapping little tabs which can be a little bit of an annoyance to get positioned properly and then you bring this you got some slots right here uh, now you can kind of see that this is bigger than this uh, that's one thing that is definitely inaccurate and you can totally see like the, the little bit right here I mean, that is, if you look real close, you can see that that is bigger on this than this. So the fact that you have to wrap this around the head is what kind of makes this a, necessary to be a little bit bigger than this. Um, so for me, that does take away some of the, I guess, realism, but it's still kind of cool to be able to display this on there. This is a lot more proportionate to how it should look. Uh, well, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this kind of makes it look like his head is squished, I suppose. Uh, I guess maybe this is a little bit more accurate if he's wearing it. I, I just, I don't know. It's It, it definitely is a toss-up uh, in something that most people aren't going to care too much about, but I notice it, and hardcore collectors are probably going to notice it as well. So there you go. So that's all of his accessories, both uh, standard and as well as Deluxe. Now, coming in to take a look at the one and only Star-Lord himself, and again, I am always blown away by what Hot Toys is able to do. The talent that they have in terms of recreating likenesses is honestly, in my opinion, second to none out there. They just consistently put out wonderful looking representations of characters. Now, some people, don't really think that this looks like Chris Pratt. To me, honestly, I think it does. I think what puts people off is it doesn't have the expression that they like. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have that original one anymore, but that original had a bit of a smirk, which is a little bit more, I, I guess, fitting for Chris Pratt. He's always kind of smiling and stuff. This is a much more serious look. I, when I look at this, I, I get an impression of when Peter Quill met Ego kind of for the first time and Ego was basically explaining his evil plan to him. That's the look of intensity that I see on him. He's not always smiling. And I think that's what put some people off the expression i think that it does look really good i love the detail that they got with the hair you can see some nice coloring throughout the whole thing you can see down the side he's got his little sideburns coming across uh good i mean one thing i, it's, I love focus oh, i really want that to focus i mean you can see stubble along the uh, like chin area and then across the little mustache kind of area just really 
spectacular. Now, some people do have problems with uh, the jacket staining the neck. I, I don't think I have that. Um, I'll, I'll look a little bit closer when I take this jacket off, but uh, that is definitely an issue that some people have been having. If you do have it, contact the, the place where you got the figure from. Most places are pretty good about issuing replacements and things of that nature. But like I said, you got the short jacket that comes on here. This comes with the deluxe and standard version. Great detail. Love the little gold buttons that they have painted. Some little gold sort of hooks. You got hard plastic shoulder bits. This back section here is a, a harder plastic. It does kind of make him look like he doesn't have much of a neck. Uh, that's one thing that I, I constantly keep looking at. Uh, the way that the collar is, it, it really does kind of come up high. Also, you can see the little earpiece there behind. I mean, again, great detail just put right into every aspect of it. And again, like the hair, it just great paint variation on there. But uh, gorgeous looking jacket. Again, it is full leather, but does look really, really spectacular. Uh, you can zip it and take it off. You just bring that down. It is a little bit tricky uh, to get it back on. I am going to take it down because I do have to put the... Uh, other jacket on and I feel like it's backwards like I feel like the zipper should be on that side um, unless you're left-handed and this is a left-handed jacket I, I feel at least for me it's harder to get it zipped up because I'm not left-handed so it's a little bit messy uh, looking at the undershirt you can see that he has the gray one now when we first saw Star-Lord in the movie this was the shirt that he was actually wearing this is what was on him while he was also wearing the jetpack while he was fighting that big ugly monster in the uh, beginning part of the movie he took this off after it was gross and the sweaty and this is the shirt that he put on so if you wanted to you know recreate kind of that look uh, again you have that option available to you but really nice and accurate looking representation of that gray shirt that he put on you can see he's got his little belt section here again great detail with that you got the little holsters here on the side which getting that out of the way all you do for this kind of lift that up you got the little section here it's a little bit tricky you just kind of slide that in and give that a little pop to lock it into place just like that you can obviously do that on both sides with both of his blasters great detail with his pants again nice tailoring and texture you got a couple different materials in here a little bit softer of a material this is more like a jean type of material this gets a little bit softer you come around here to the back you have some kind of that full leather on there which is really very nice one of the other main differences and obviously this is a different look than how he appeared in the first movie as well oh one thing that also is really nice is there is there is a magnet here uh, that allows you to keep the little uh, section there I'm trying to hmm I don't I mean I guess you can kind of do that although I mean it kind of he's sitting fairly low on him I don't know if he's sitting on his pectoral I guess you could kind of recreate that I don't think that's the purpose of that uh, I think it's just meant to hold the little lapel section down uh, but one thing that is a nice improvement over uh, the original is his boot section is now done up in two separate pieces the other the original one was just all one piece which really did limit the articulation this is separate so now the feet have a full range of motion which is absolutely terrific and you keep that shifted down one thing that i will say though is that uh, because you got the feet sometimes the little ball joints are a little bit loose so he tends to well not mine i'm just saying in general uh, but when you do have the separate pieces i'm just commenting when you do that separate pieces it can tend to make the figure fall forward uh, if you have that all one piece it's a much more stable kind of stance but it really does limit uh, the posing options for you uh, me i'm a very vanilla pose type of person which means a lot of times i'll just have him standing there like so so the way that the boots were on the original was never something that bothered me somebody like shardimus prime who loves ankle pivot I know would not like that at all, but really nice detail on there. Good paint variation. You can see it's a little bit dirty of a red color on here. Overall, spectacular looking. Now, uh, for his articulation, uh, the head is on a ball joint. Uh, I'm trying to 
see if the neck is articulated. I, I, I think that is. Uh, so you do have a pretty good range of motion with that, obviously. Very standard articulation. The uh, shoulders rotate around. Uh, the jacket does restrict a little, but it's pretty forgiving in, in some areas. I mean, you can get a pretty decent range of motion with it. You got a little armpit joint. You have the bicep swivel. You have two joints here at the elbow, but again, it does get a little bit tight. But what I do like is you have a different material right here, which uh, is accurate uh, to the movie. So you get a little bit more than a 90 degree bend at the elbow with the two joints. You have the wrist rotation. You have an upper ab crunch. You got the waist rotation or the hip rotation. The waist, or well, no, that's the waist. This is the hip, Paul. Good Lord. Uh, that moves in and out. When you do move it, though, it will make, if you go out, it will, as you can see, separate the gun. Uh, so you just push that back down. That, that's one of the downsides of that. Rotates at the upper part of the thigh. Two bends here at the knee. And then as I was talking about, you get a full range of motion, forward and back, in and out, all that kind of stuff with the ankles. Now, to swap out the jacket first take the fists out and sometimes the whole peg comes out sometimes it just pulls that off like so now again make it a little bit easier bend these arms back and then just fold this over his shoulder and slide the whole thing down as you would this is where Anybody who walks in my room, they're like, why are you playing with a doll? Because you're putting clothes on there like a Barbie. That's not a doll! Right, Shardimus? Just throwing out the name Shardimus a lot today. So, slide this down. I was actually watching a bunch of his videos recently, so maybe that's why it's stuck in my head. Uh, so, again, taking that off, and again, standard version. Set that off to the side. Uh, there's his... Oh, I'm just going to take the gun off. There's his shirt underneath which looks good and then again uh, it, it makes the neck look a lot better uh, i don't see any st oh no there is a little there's a little bit of staining on mine oh well, maybe it's just I, I can't tell if that's stain or if it's just paint variation it's kind of hard to tell it looks like it might have a little bit of a stain on it not as bad as some people's that I have seen. I'll just chalk it up to, you know, maybe he's getting a rash or something. <laughs> uh, so great, again, really nice uh, look for that shirt right there. Very, very cool. Uh, obviously, you can take this, you can put that on them. Uh, you would just detach this. You have a little belt section here that does detach. Um, which way does it detach though? There we go. That can come off. This is Velcroed on, and you can see it is a pretty long shirt, so uh, it does go down nicely so that when you are articulating them, it doesn't make it pop out the back, which I really do appreciate. So getting that belt lined up back on there. Uh, so yeah, again, like I said, this is the part where it looks like I'm playing with a doll. All right, so we get that looking nice now uh for the actual jetpack uh, because you can put it on over his jacket or you can put it on over the shirt it's personal preference in what how you want to create it it can get a little tricky uh detaching it um and honestly i'm trying to so you just pop this out here and because again these are plastic pieces i do get a little nervous over time uh with doing it um they're a little bit flexible but really not a lot so you take this bring that over kind of sits right there bring this oh, around and then that's going to go around his waist and it it, it does get a little bit tricky to, to line everything up because uh, you got to try and now remember well here let me maybe it's a little bit easier to go like this slide that in get that oh his belt popped off okay so slide that in and then yeah it, it's really tricky to see where the uh, buttons are 
to line up. Um, so honestly, I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, it doesn't look all that bad, but there you can have his jetpack on. There is space. You can kind of see how like there's gapping, which does really work when you have him wearing his jacket, which is how he was at the end of the movie. So again, you can recreate that. You can also take his head off. Just grab hold, pop the little ball joint off like so. You can take this again, just the ball joint. Ah, very stiff ball joint. Is that on there? Okay, there we go. So you can do that with them. Oh, you can't see. Camera's too low. Let me come up here some. So again, you can do that. You can come around here to the back. You can turn the little light on. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. There you go. So you can do that. That looks really weird and creepy. So we're going to take that off. Or option three put this guy i'm trying to yeah that does kind of look like a little bit of staining around there that's a little unfortunate now it seems like it's a common problem uh again mine is really not that bad if yours is bad contact where you got the the piece from and get a replacement it's you know I any company that's a reputable one will do it for you so here let me come in here you just got a little gangsta lean. So again, you take this little piece off. This is magnetic. And there are little slots here. You can kind of see the little gap there at the very top. And you got the little tabs right here that allow you to line it up. That way you know the proper way that it's supposed to go. Take this. It tells you to take both sides off, but you really don't need to. You can put that on like that. This part, though, does get a little bit tricky getting the, uh, the tabs to reline up um, I, I do feel like doing that could potentially damage them over time but you know we'll see okay so you have that and then that and that's magnetic so just line up those tabs and that pulls it in there and again this is the exclusive look oh i also noticed that he's also kind of if it if it'll focus he's also kind of sort of looking off to the side a little which is kind of cool uh, but there's uh the helmet partially deployed which again really cool option uh, for this particular figure uh, I, I wish that they did things like that a little bit more with other stuff they're doing a lot more deluxe figures uh which has some collectors a little bit upset uh because you're getting more accessories uh they kind of seem to do away with the dx line uh which is a whole bunch of accessories um and a much higher price point uh and what they've seemed to have done is they've done away with the dx line which with dx for the most part just stood for deluxe so i don't know it's kind of like they're rebranding it but they have that and i'm just gonna no oh, i don't i don't want to no no okay I'm not gonna slide it down uh so they've gotten rid of that terminology and they're just going with what they're calling a deluxe line of stuff and uh, some people are complaining about it I don't mind it really all that much because I, I, I like the option that it affords people. Uh, if you don't want to display him with this, and honestly, I'm probably not going to display him with this. Uh, I'm probably going to use this uh, because I like seeing his face. I also like having this kind of go for him. So I like having the in-between and I like the jacket so for me the deluxe one was the way to go uh, but if you're not going to use those accessories it, there's an uh, there's an affordable uh, well, more affordable option than uh paying that higher price point so get that belt come on belt don't argue with me all right so there we go Oh, and then it's not even there. Yeah, yeah fit it with it. So then, 
to put the long jacket on. Again, you just tuck the arms back. Uh, one of the problems with sliding on a long jacket is this does tend to get a little bit bunchy. So try to pull this down as much as you can just to kind of help uh, it slide in there pretty good. And then just put one arm in, kind of get that in there. We're dressing dolls again. And then put that in there, feed that through, and you can see it kind of, yeah, bunches, bunches up. It does get a little bit tricky, and then you just pull that up and over his shoulder. Dressing dolls, dressing dolls. And when you're done, uh, this is my preferred look. Uh, I really do like the long jacket with them. Uh, I, I just think it's stylish uh, and, and looks very cool with them. Now, obviously, I gotta give him his hands back. So pop those little guys in there. Uh, so again, for me, the, the options are just wonderful uh, that you can use the different shirts the different jackets uh to really create the different helmets to really create your preferred look uh for star lord and it, it is really very good uh, I, I mean i love that they they do that it's something that uh as i mentioned i, I i've seen them doing more and more of lately and i think it's a great way to go uh, I, I really, really do. It, it allows you options uh, in uh, different mixes of affordability and such to get kind of what you want and, and still get a really, really good looking figure. But this guy turned out terrific. And I know, I seem to be saying that almost every time there's a new Hot Toy release. But this guy really did turn out great. There's a few minor things that I'm not a big fan of. Uh, like I said, I don't know necessarily what the different tape kind of thing is all about. I also don't like the fact that that's the wrong color. And then that kind of annoys me. But those two kind of minor things aside, this is a great release. Personally, I think that the deluxe version is the best way to go. Yes, it does cost a little bit more, but you get a lot more options to kind of play around with and get your perfect look. The accessory count is really good. The likeness is, I really think, spot on. It's just that expression that I, I kind of do miss a little smirk, but I don't think it takes away from you know, recreating the actor's likeness. I think this absolutely looks like Chris Pratt. Ultimately though, this is another great release and there are different options. Like I said, I have the deluxe one. You can also get the uh, just standard one. I think there's like a $20 difference. That's why I think for 20 extra bucks, you might as well get the version that comes with the most stuff. Especially in my case, since I really do like the long jacket and then the you know partially deployed mask. Those are accessories that I'll use. So for me, it's worth that price. So all that being said, if either version of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Star-Lord is a piece that you'd like to add to your collection, both are available right now at Sideshow Collectibles. So all you have to do for that is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Sideshow where you can check out availability on this guy, as well as the rest of their wide range of 1-6 scale figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, I would really appreciate you letting me know by hitting that thumbs up button. It actually does go a long way towards helping me out and I would really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, welcome. And before you go, make sure you subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or if you already subscribed, now more than ever, it's important to make sure that you're getting those email notifications. We all know just how unreliable that YouTube subscription box is, and the best way to make sure that you don't miss any future reviews of mine is to click on that little bell right below this video and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, be excellent to each other.